Whoa, mama! There are so many new abilities in Dragonflight, and many of you are probably feeling a bit lost right now. Between the completely overwhelming new talent trees and the chaos of a brand new game mode like Solo Shuffle, this new expansion may feel a bit overwhelming to some players. Something that will always make complex mechanics more manageable, though, is actually the use of habits to simplify your gameplay. Good habits may take a small amount of time to build up, but they can make all the difference in navigating stressful situations. I mean, the whole point of a habit is that it's a condition response to something happening. At the end of this video, we will give you five habits that you can start building up in Dragonflight, so you won't even have to think about your gameplay, you'll just start climbing. That may seem a bit too good to believe, but that's just the power that we carry over here at Skillcap. With our elite staff of rank 1 players, we've gone through the work of decking out our brand new site with the best Dragonflight courses that you can't find anywhere else. Regardless of what class you're remaining this time around, we've got you covered with everything you'll need to know to master the new expansion. This is by far the best time to brush up on your PvP mechanics for the new release, and what's even better is that we actually provide insurance, meaning that if you don't climb 400 rating while actively using our service, you'll get your money back. We do this because our service works, and if it doesn't work, you shouldn't pay. Sounds crazy, right? We know. Check out Skillcapped, and we'll see you there. Let's get started with our first massive change coming to Dragonflight though, which brings an all new habit many players are going to need to start building up. It's crucial that in Dragonflight you're adapting your talents during the pre-round in Arena. Because of all the options you're provided in your talent trees, it's only natural that some of them will be better versus specific classes. Say for example, you're playing as our new Dragon spec, Preservation. When playing into a double caster comp, you'll likely want to take a talent such as Obsidian Metal to give yourself some immunity to interrupts. This is a stark difference from playing versus a double melee comp where this sort of interrupt protection isn't as valuable since you generally are going to want to stay out of interrupt range versus melees anyway. In Dragonflight, you're clearly intended to make these sort of swaps in the pre-round because they have literally given you the ability to save talent presets. You can save one for every specific team comp you might be going against and min-max your class as much as possible. This is something that every class needs to be taken advantage of. It's not just for evokers. Say for example you're playing as an Ellie Shaman into a comp with two druids, which is bound to happen in Solo Shuffle. Your Earthbind Totem is going to lose a ton of value and you might actually consider swapping it out for Windrush Totem instead. Dragonflight intentionally threw in more talents than you can pick up to make you have to be selective with which ones you bring into the arena. As annoying as this level of min-maxing might be, this is absolutely going to be a requirement to climb the ranks in arena, as if you don't take advantage of this feature, you'll run the risk of just having useless abilities during your rounds. Luckily, if you start building up this habit now, after just a few matches, you'll start doing it naturally and not even have to worry about it. As we mentioned, you can create a large number of presets, and you're even able to import talent sheets as well, so all it takes is a little bit of upfront work to figure out what talents you want to take versus which classes. Once you have that figured out, you'll just save each as its own option, and voila, you're all good to go. Remember, if you're looking for the best talents to take for your class, we'll help you out with that over at Skillcapped. But let's keep things moving for now by jumping into our next habit. This one is going to be a really crucial habit for DPS players to build up, but healers can also apply the same concept as well. To introduce this though, let's talk a bit about stuns. As you're all aware, stuns essentially render your character useless, meaning that generally while stunned, you won't be doing any damage or healing. This is something that is obvious to almost everyone watching this video, but what if I told you most of you are basically stunning yourself in arena for way more time than you actually realize? You might ask, skill capped, how can that be possible? Well, if you think about it, every second that you spend not taking an action might as well be the same as you being stunned. During that downtime, you could be dishing out damage, setting up CC, purging your enemies, or even helping out your team with heals or dispels. All of these things obviously sound like great uses of your time, but the reason many players maybe don't do this is because they're tunneling way too hard on one player. If you ever catch yourself experiencing a large amount of downtime trying to chase down an enemy player, you're likely tunneling way too hard and should be at the very least looking to disrupt the other players around you and taking advantage of your globals while closing that distance. It may not always be 100% apparent what you should be doing at all times in your matches, but by constantly putting out pressure for the enemy team to deal with, you'll be able to create openings that you wouldn't have otherwise. Say for example you spend 5 seconds trying to chase down the enemy healer who has clearly survived your team's go. That's 5 seconds that you could have been spending putting out damage on another player on the team. This is going to be especially prevalent with Solo Shuffle, where your team is going to have much more difficult time orchestrating quality goes because of the lack of communication. For this reason, it's incredibly important that you're being as efficient as possible in your matches to create as many opportunities as possible 
possible for your team to set up a kill. As we just mentioned though, this same habit isn't just for DPS. Healers can also benefit from utilizing downtime in Arena. By throwing out dispels, topping your teammates off with buffs, or even dishing out some damage of their own if they're really falling asleep during the round. With the new talent systems, there are plenty of damage spells healers can pick up to help their team out with the damage, so don't feel like you gotta just sit around and wait for your teammates to start taking damage. With how many abilities each class has, it's very unlikely that you're going to find a single second in your matches where none of them are worth using. Try to maximize your uptime and you will really see massive improvements in Dragonflight. Moving on to our third habit players need to build up in Dragonflight though, you're really going to want to be paying attention to your teammate's CC that is going out and combo your crowd control with them. There's definitely a bit of an art to using your crowd control effectively though. For many players starting out, you may want to just build the general habit of using your CC to begin with. As you get better, you'll start to pick up on some key ticket concepts that will really elevate your play. For example, something you should absolutely be keeping track is the enemy's DR. Using an add-on such as Gladius, this will help make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck with your crowd control, but the real habit you want to be building up is to practice comboing your CC with your teammates. To do this effectively, we recommend using the add-ons Omni CD and Jack's Party cast bars to track the cooldowns and casts of your teammates. In solo shuffle, it's going to be up to you to be aware of when your teammates are dishing out the crowd control. If you've ever played any other solo queue type game, you'll know that your teammates will very rarely adapt to you, which means that you'll be the one who needs to do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to setting up kills. For healers, this might mean preparing to hit the enemy healer with some sort of stun when they get out of a poly, or for DPS, this might mean throwing out a fear on the other DPS so they can't disrupt your kill on their teammate. On the topic of being aware, it's also just important that you're looking out for who your teammates are crowd controlling so you don't accidentally get in their way by breaking it or using CC of your own. With the add-ons we suggested, you'll be able to observe when your teammates have key crowd control abilities coming off cooldown, and you can prepare to combo your abilities with theirs. Say for example you see your warrior's storm bolt coming off cooldown. He's probably just going to throw that thing on the kill target without thinking much about it, which means that you can prepare for him to do this by setting up a fear onto the enemy healer at the same time it comes off cooldown. By being on the lookout for your teammates' crowd control, it'll greatly benefit your awareness and really allow your team to slow down the game. Dragonflight is going to feel fast-paced when you have two DPS just wailing on you the entire entire time with all of their new abilities, but if you're able to use a fear or hex on one of them to give yourself some time to breathe, you'll start to notice some really obvious kill opportunities just sitting right in front of you. Our fourth habit touches on something far more basic, but still incredibly important. You really need to build the habit of using your interrupts to disrupt the enemy team's big spell casts. This is likely one of the first habits players are going to build up when they're starting out with PvP, but it's also one of the most important. Since most interrupts are on a relatively short cooldown, you're going to be using them pretty frequently in your matches. It's essentially just a different form of CC, as hitting a successful kick will lock your opponents out of casting for quite a bit of time. There is one issue though, not all interrupts are created equal. It should go without saying that interrupting a warlock's measly incinerate isn't going to yield as much benefit as interrupting a nuke like Chaos Bolt. If you really want to get the most bang for your buck from interrupts, you'll want to be conscious about what abilities you're using them on. Generally, you'll want to be on the lookout for crowd control abilities, such as Poly or Cyclone, abilities that will cause a lot of damage, such as Chaos Bolt or Vampiric Touch, or heals such as Renewing Mist or Holy Light. It might be kind of difficult to land these interrupts at times, but if you're really looking to build up this habit, a great tip we have is to make sure that your interrupt bind is as easy to press as possible. A great keybind for interrupts, for example, would be a key like F. It's very close to where your hand will rest on the keyboard, making it easy to press, and because it's not on any modifiers, you can quickly tap the key without really much room for error. Many players will put their interrupt on a modifier such as Shift 4, but the problem with this is that you need to press two keys to land that interrupt then, rather than just one. For any ability that calls for a bit more urgency, it's a good idea to make it as easy to press as possible to ensure you always get the cast off. Interrupting is one of the most fundamental things all players need to master in PvP, and this is just the most basic level of it. Once you start to really master the art of kicks, you'll be able to recognize what abilities your enemies will want to interrupt when you're casting. By using an add-on like Omnibar, you can track your enemy's kick cooldown and use that to figure out when they're likely going to try and interrupt you. For example, if your enemies have a kick available, you can bet if you start casting a big ticket spell like Unstable Affliction, they're going to try to interrupt you. This at a basic level is how you start learning to juke kicks with your spell cast. By recognizing when a kick is available, you can use your high value spells as a bait to try and outplay your opponent. This is a really important skill for any caster and especially healers to build up as oftentimes one well-timed kick can make all the difference in a round. Finally though, it's time to talk about our last habit all players need to build up in Dragonflight. It's so incredibly important that all of you are practicing proper cooldown trading in your arenas, otherwise it's very likely you'll get left behind at the start of this new expansion. It's very important to keep in mind that your cooldowns are very powerful and you really need to make sure you're taking advantage of them. I can't tell you how many times we've seen players just sit on all their cooldowns, waiting for the perfect opportunity to use them. It's not always the best idea to wait though. Many players try to push their luck and it just results in them dying from greed. Don't do this! 
When it comes to defensives, it's pretty simple. Whenever you see big offensive cooldowns from your enemies, you're going to want to pop a defensive. The most simple example of this is when a Ret Pally pops wings. This is a big sign that he's about to start dealing a massive amount of damage, and you'll want to prepare for this by hitting a defensive, such as Dispersion for Shadow Priest or even Aspect of the Turtle as a Hunter. By playing it safe and building the habit of properly trading cooldowns, you'll be able to drastically increase your survivability and make your matches so much easier. When it comes to offensive cooldowns though, there's another problem that players will have. You need to make sure that when using your offensive you're setting yourself up to get some sort of value out of it. Without cooldowns, it's going to be very difficult to set up a kill, so you don't want to just be throwing your offensives away. Say for example you're playing as a rogue and you're trying to set up a kill on a warlock. You throw up all your dots on the target, you apply your healing reduction, and then you instantly pop cooldowns, ready to secure a kill on your poor victim. There's a massive problem with what we just said. You didn't use any crowd control at all to lock this target down. Suddenly you popped all your cooldowns and the warlock just teleports away to safety and waits them out. Now you're out of offensive cooldowns and you didn't even really force any defensives from your opponent. Now let's switch it up. Let's say the rogue does the same thing. He gets all of his dots up, applies his healing reduction, but now follows it up with a kidney shot before popping cooldowns. The warlock is forced to trinket and teleport away, effectively trading your offensives for his trinket, which is something we will take any day. This is the proper way to take advantage of your offensive cooldowns, and if you're not practicing this in your matches right now, you're going to have a lot of trouble in Dragonflight. Finally though, if you really want to stay on top of things, we recommend downloading a cooldown tracker, such as Omnibar, so you can more effectively keep track of what's going on in the arena at all times. That's going to do it for our five habits that every player needs to start abusing in Dragonflight. Remember though, there's a lot of nuance in the new expansion, and you may not know exactly what cooldowns to look for or what abilities you should be interrupting. Maybe you don't even know how to play your class. With Dragonflight opening up many opportunities for players to play multiple classes, it's more important than ever for you to have access to the best information when it comes to PvP. That's why over at Skillcapped, we've been putting in the legwork to make sure that our site offers you everything you need to know to climb the ranks this season. With Solo Shuffle being a completely new way to play the game, this is a massive opportunity for many players to learn the game and really perfect their craft. What's more is that a purchase to our site also includes unlimited access to not only our Wrath of the Lich King site, but our League and Valorant sites as well. If you're ever looking to improve at games, Skillcapped has got you covered. Be sure to click that link in the description below, and we'll see you there. As always though, we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.